Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tech and Beer. We're live again today from the Celtic Corner here in uh, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And today my guest is Adrian Power, who mm. works with the uh, Faculty of Computer Science at Dow, Dalhousie University. And we're gonna be talking about women in tech, uh, some of the challenges that uh, they face, and some of the things that people like yourself are, are doing and working mm -hmm. on to try and Im improve the situation, of make course. things better. Welcome to Tech and Beer. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm so glad you invited me today. No problem, cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Gotta get the beer in. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, so tell me about yourself. Tell me about your background. Sure. So uh, I've, uh, you know, I, I don't have a tech background necessarily. Okay. Um, and I sort of fell into tech. So it's kind of an interesting story. So. Um, my career before this was as a professional athlete. So national team member, Team Canada from 2003 to 2016. So for quite a while and I had a, I had a great career. And um, you know, moving on, I was in my master's and I still am in my master's actually uh, due to this job a little bit. Uh, but um, in my master's for high performance coaching and technical leadership at University of British Columbia. And I was doing a little bit of research on Olympic alumni engagement. I was doing this project for the Canadian Olympic Committee. And uh, I happened to pop my head into the Office of Advancement to ask some questions, and I was hired on the spot for this Women in Tech initiative. And I said, sure, I'll do it. So Fantastic. that's sort of, yeah, that's sort of how I fell into it. And since then, I've been having, you know, this like love affair with tech since. And right. I, I enjoy my career. I'm so glad that I was, I was put with the Faculty of Computer Science as opposed to another faculty at Dalhousie University. Yeah. And I'm really excited to be a part of this initiative. Um, so, to give you a little bit of background about what, <laughs> what the program is, it's called We Are All CS, um, okay. and it's, our, it's one of Dalhousie's premier gender initiative projects that we have on the go right now. And right now the focus is on women in tech. So we called it We Are All CS strategically because mm. we're looking at not just women, but we wanna also um, try to work on underrepresented groups. Yeah. So African Nova Scotians as well as indigenous. But okay. right now the push and the focus is on women. Um, right. So we're graduating somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, 19% women, um, and you yeah. know we're right on par with engineering typically too. So, engineering is is around 19, 20%. We're always right. around that 19, 20% as well. So it's it's sort of a STEM initiative as well. Yeah. Um, so you know, our dean came back and he, he looked at computer science, and you look at industry, and you look at you know the the K to 12 pipeline beforehand, and there's a lot of barriers for women. Okay, right. so when you look at industry, you know, if we're only graduating 19%, you talk to any given industry organization, you're seeing anywhere from 5% women to 20% women, you know, mm -hmm. and 20% being the high end of numbers of women that are in the organization. And when you look at the K-12 system, the, let's say the Canadian K-12, let, yeah. let's keep it to North American K-12 system, um, you know, not only do Canadian youth and parents not know about the, you know, wonderful careers and you know the economic side of those careers that could happen for their their um, uh, their children but the teachers and you know the, the the systems and programs already set up in place right now don't allow for necessarily a pipeline of tech or computer science right. IB is you know a, a big focus in the high school <coughs> a lot of students uh, want to take IB because it's an internationally recognized you know mm -hmm. credential that they want to have and it, it helps them get into university and if you want to be a part of computer science it is an elective outside yeah. the realm of IB. So, you know, so that's Canadians. But then on top of it, if girls, you know, if we don't have a lot of girls interested in robotics or AI and tech has always got that that sort of feel to it as opposed yeah. to, you know, social change as a result of technology and mm. the incredible digital innovations that are happening in organizations um, that are changing society, that story isn't reigning true. Right. And also the number of jobs that are out there and how well these graduates do. So a lot of issues yeah. around around you know computer science around tech and 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 for women in particular so canadians right. and women it's interesting you mentioned like north america keeping it to north mm -hmm. america because um one of the things that's always baffled me is how and i think i mentioned this to you previously in mm -hmm. one of our other conversations how like russia and eastern europe in some ways lead the world in the number of women and women in tech they so do. so there's obviously some unique challenges that that we face here or, or reasons mm -hmm. as to why we're not because you, you wouldn't necessarily think of a you know, country like Russia so conservative and whatever issues they might have you know uh, should be leading the world in that kind of stat. Oh you're 100% right and uh, another another country that's doing a great job is Germany and okay. which is really interesting so you know the UK um, Britain in particular 
they might have worse numbers than North America when it comes to women in wow. STEM. So they're a little bit under us, um, not to say that we're killing it, you know, that, that's yeah. not the case. Um, but, you know, you look at Great Britain and then you look at Germany and it's just like night and day for women in STEM, uh, STEM careers, tech, tech careers. And, um, you know, I've, we've cultivated a relationship with an institution in Germany and we had a lot of talks about, to the government over there about, you know, what, what is the difference between Germany and, yeah. and Britain? Like, what are the issues? And what happened about a decade ago is Germany went into their junior highs and they allowed industry a window into the junior, the junior high system. So in the junior high system, the students are exposed to case studies, you know, uh, experiential learning. Okay. Um, they do workshops and they're entering the junior highs and they're doing this incredible work where the students are exposed to all careers. Mm. And so guess what happens? <laughs> when the population is, ex is exposed to diverse career types, you don't have any issue with women in STEM. Right. So it's not a lack of enthusiasm based on the gender. It's there's systemic issues that are in place that are stopping these things yeah. from happening. And it's something that, you know, at, at the Faculty of Computer Science, we, this is a massive undertaking. This, yeah. this We Are All CS and, and we can't take credit for everything that we're doing because Carnegie Mellon and Harvey Mudd are two institutions in the United States mm. that have been trying to achieve gender parity in, in tech. And Carnegie Mellon actually announced this year that they, they reached gender parity. So they've been working on this Fantastic. for over a decade. Oh my gosh, yeah. like amazing. And so we're mimicking the Carnegie Mellon recipe. Right. And you know, we've garnered a relationship with them and we're, find, we're trying to find out those finely tuned things that where would, the, would have they started 10 years ago and trying to start yeah. at a, a little bit of a better place and also molding this based on the Canadian context. And this is the program that we're going forward. So it's a, you know, curriculum changes. We've, we've completely changed our, our first two years curriculum. Wow. We're changing how we evaluate our students and making sure there's yeah. no soft barriers there in building confidence. Um, we're changing the experience. Mm. So our Women in Technology Society is a society that we now are, are giving a fund to, and mm. you know they're t they're giving the opportunity for girls to go to Grace Hop or go to international conferences mm. for women in tech, and you know go to the Canadian Celebration of Women in Computing conference and, and things like that. So, and giving them a budget for social activities to, right. to create that culture of women, you know, in the building of of the Faculty of Computer Science, and uh, giving them that group that that um, you know that friend group, that uh, colleague group, and making them feel that there's other faces. Yeah. And we're also hiring. More more female faculty members because we right. need female faces at the front of the classroom yeah. so that's something we've also been very cognizant of so a lot of changes um, really comprehensive program and feel lucky to be a part of it it, yeah. it is a massive you know societal change project and we are chatting with universities mm. across Canada so and we've had signed on the dotted line a few universities to say okay if you reach 40 percent we want you to help us facilitate this right. recipe. And That's this is something fantastic. that we, yeah, we've completely agreed to do. Um, yeah. And it's all thanks to the Dean of Computer Science, Andrew yeah. Rao Chaplin, who has okay. completely opened the doors. And he is, and he's the champion for this. And he's right. the igniter of this Catalyst project. So feel lucky to be a part of it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So so where were you when you started this, when this program started? Like what's the progress that you've made so far? So, um, we're measuring everything based on the 2016 base okay. and we just we just launched the program in 2018 so the fall okay. of 2018 so is when we are really asked, yes it's yeah. really okay. really new and we just locked in those two years okay. now we're working on year three and four so it'll because it'll take time for that cohort to make it to their right. third and fourth year so um we've increased the number of female applicants to the faculty of computer science yeah. by 144 percent in our first year yeah so you know, that doesn't speak to where, you know, year two and year three. So we need that wave to go, we need these, you know, this cohort right. to move to year two and then year three and then keep that recruiting happening. So at year, you know, at year four into this, we're going to know exactly where we are yeah. in terms of percentage for our undergraduates. Um, we actually have pretty good percentages for our masters and our PhD for women, which is really interesting. So right. we have higher numbers um, of those graduates, but we've increased that, you know, in a significant amount in our yeah. first year. But now we need that wave to continue. Continue building. Um, another challenge we're facing uh, that I should mention is that computer science is growing mm. at Dalhousie. Um, I'm sure I, I don't know the numbers at you know Waterloo um, or McGill or U of A or any of those, but uh, we have been growing immensely over the last. So over the last three years, we've grown 80 percent mm. to give you an idea. Wow. So we have 1,500 students at the undergraduate, or sorry, at entirety. So our, our PhDs, our masters, and our undergraduates yeah. were 1,500 students, um, and we've we've reached the, that growth is just like nonstop. Right. So, you know, the question is, 
it, with that massive growth, so so not only are we trying to bring more women in, but our our number of men is increasing too. Right. So I, you know, in terms of the percentage, the, the breakdown of the percentage, I couldn't give it to you yet because I know we haven't moved through yeah. the years, that's but fair. we've increased that number 144 percent our first year, and yeah, we're very proud of that number. And that's a great first step, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. uh, you, the, there's always a first step. And yes. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's like. To not all of our viewers and, and, and people that we kind of uh, would listen to us would understand why is it so important to have parity and why, why is it so important to increase the number of women in tech? That's a good question. Um, you have daughters. You have no, daughter. No, I have one son. You have one son. Okay. Yeah, so okay. Okay. He can't help. So, sorry. I can't. I can't. He can't, he can't help in this scenario. <laughs> okay. um, so let's think of it this way. Yeah. Um, your phone. Okay. Your phone. Um, your desktop <coughs> that you work on. Your laptop that you work on. Yeah. Um, that machine and how it operates and, and the platform that, you know, all, all the software, all the encryption, everything there, that's all developed by a large percentage male perspective. Mm. So that, that device, when a, when a female picks it up and is operating, we're op it is operating under a system that has been developed by males typically. Mm. And so if that percentage is so high, and now that we're so many, you know, industry now is, is now moving into, you know, an era of, of tech and, and digital innovation. Yeah. And companies are turning into tech companies. Like the big banks, they're, they're calling themselves tech companies now. So everybody's a tech company now. Everybody's a tech company. They might company. not know it yet or admit it yet, but they are. Exactly, yeah, yeah. or they have to, or, or, they're, or they're slow adopters. They're gonna be yeah. squeezed into that system. So if the technology, you know, if the, if the analytics we're collecting, so the, the choices, you know, the data points that we're choosing, if the algorithms, you know, if the platforms, if the, the, solu the technical solutions and digital transformations that organizations are building are built under, you know, one-sided sort of gender mm. perspective, how are we solving the problems of society? How are we truly being customer focused yeah. if we're not looking at both gender perspectives? And, and the other issue is, you know, when you're looking at that, we talked about the tech talent drought, you know, so mm. th that's the major, the societal piece is the, ma the massive piece. But if you look at, if you look at the tech talent drought that's happening in North America and, and in Europe, why wouldn't we tap into 50% of the population? Makes sense, yeah. So, you know, those are my two arguments yeah. when I sort of speak of that. Both, and two great reasons, uh, I mean, great arguments too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the talent drought is, what I, I live with that on a daily basis when we're trying to find resources for different projects. I bet projects you get too. And, and uh, you know, it's, I think the stat I heard was that there's a, you know, there's zero unemployment in Canada in the tech industry, mm -hmm. which when you think of the unemployment rate as a whole, that's incredible, right? Absolutely. So that the industry is growing, the demand is there. So yeah, why wouldn't why wouldn't we tap into new kind of resources, um, <clears throat> and pools of people? And then the other bit, you know, about how technology is kind of programmed and uh, uh, developed. That becomes especially important when you talk about AI and tools that might eventually Absolutely. make decisions for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, most technologies influence in our We're decisions. We're going there. We're, but AI is huge. It's, 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 it's enormous. It's going to be massive. It's going to be part of our daily lives. It, it mm -hmm. already is in some ways, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, having that biased viewpoint, we, don't, we want a completely impartial viewpoint in that, if we can. And it's going to be really hard to reach that. It is going to be incredibly but, hard to reach that. Um, and you know, part of the part of the issue I think is, it stems at leadership. Mm. And you know, so I, you know, my job is to work with industry. So you know, I'm getting in there. I'm finding out what are the issues in industry. How can I help solve those problems from the faculty yeah. of computer science? And it truly is leadership. So the partners that have come on board with We Are All CS in particular in our first year and you know in our infancy and yeah. and taking a, ch a chance on us. Um, are organizations that have leadership that truly believe in the goals of this program. Right. So nobody's coming on board saying, okay, you have a gender initiative. Okay, I'm gonna, I want to be attached to this. Our logo has to be a part of this. Yeah. You know, that's something that is a focus for us. Because I've gone out and I've met with industry and you know, where is, where is diversity and inclusion not a pillar in any organization? You, you can find it on any website. It exists. Yeah. The question is, do they care? Right. Do they actually want to do actionables, or is it just a part of their mission statement? Yeah. Because it, it's it's a public piece. It's a public public right. facing piece, and I can truly say that the the organizations that have come on board with We Are All CS have been ones that have said it in the first like the first meeting we knew that something was going to happen. Yeah. And you can see the changes. It, it's not just. It's not just like you know in the meeting they're talking about the changes that they're the actionables that they're doing mm. at the so you know there's metrics like CIOs are reporting on diversity mm. and inclusion and when you when you create a metric where a CIO is being evaluated on that he or she is going to do something about that yeah. um, 
there's also you know a massive you know there's also a, a big wave that's sort of you know happening with tech and and that sort of piece and I think that a lot of organizations want to elevate the profiles of their female leaders yeah. at this point too so this gives that opportunity and we want those female leaders to come back and be the role models those pioneers yeah. for these young women to see themselves because you know see it be it you know that's mm. that's if you you know if you see somebody there you can be it you raise an interesting point there about uh, how companies are raising the profiles of the, the female leaders I mm. I almost wonder like we need to change that viewpoint a little bit. I think I mean I think those female leaders are great and they're mm -hmm. fantastic, but we need more of the female coders. You know the female <laughs> you know the people that the female because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how like the leaders are, are obviously leadership's top down mm -hmm. has a big impact on the culture of an organization and we need you know more right. of those. But that's unrealistic for 95% of the workforce. Not everybody's going to be a, a leader. No. So the the day-to-day -day tech worker is are the coders and the programmers and the developers and the architects and the project managers and and all that. So I almost wonder if should there be a shift there in who we're, who we're pushing to the forefront? And that's a good question. And you you know you might talk to some industry organizations that are saying, you know what? Last quarter we hired 62% females for our entry level positions. And you know everybody walks around the table and everybody says, you know, congratulations for doing that and bringing yeah. on these all these entry level and a lot of a lot of industry organizations are trying to do that. So right. they're saying, let's flood it with entry level women. And and that is a strategy that, you know, they're working on. And then at that same time, this was a table by the way. This was a salon event for we are all okay in Halifax locally and I had a lot of leaders around the table we had about 13 leaders around the table and this is a particular organization he was really excited to talk about his numbers of entry level and you know another industry organization spoke up and said how many females do you have at your leadership level and so and so it just happens that um, you know this person has to report on the number of women and that's why he's hired he's made it a cognizant effort to hire mm. more women so he made some calls he came back in the room and he said five percent are women leadership wow. at the leadership level so you know the um, director VP c-suite level are five percent <clears throat> now it's great that the metrics are there and it's great that this leader has done something about mm. it it's fabulous work and that's great and I think we do need women coders we yeah. and, and they, we need to create that pipeline we need to see what women are going to come into industry and and who are going to make it how are they going to make it? That's that is the question. Mm. So we need the female leadership to not only not only be that voice at the top and, and say, you know, here's how I got there and, and be an inspiration for these women, but that voice also has to be there to say, you know, there is somebody on this end that that's that's rooting for you because when you enter an industry organization where eighty percent of the faces are male every single day and you know the social circles and you know, sometimes your voice just doesn't get heard mm. in those, or you yeah. feel like you don't fit in. And there's also a lot of the confidence. There's the unconscious bias yeah. um, that happens um, as a result, or um, imposter syndrome with the women. They don't feel like, you know, if there's a, a male that comes to the table and knows 20% of a subject but speaks very confidently on it, a woman would never speak if, if she only knew 20% of the topic. She has to know, you know, the, the 80 right. to 100% of the topic yeah. um, in order to speak about it. So. Um, and I mean, I can I can speak to those stats and give a little bit, you know, give That's a little bit of background yeah. there. So, we did a little bit of a pilot project, and we we are, we're changing how we evaluate our students. I talked about that okay. as a part of this. So this is kind of an interesting conversation. So, um, we took a couple of our online courses, and we did an experiment. So, and we had a control, and we had uh, an experimental group. And what we did was um, we allowed the experimental group to hand in assignments as many times as they would have liked. Okay, mm -hmm. to get the grade that they would yeah. that they want, and then in the control, it's the regular. You know, you're doing your test online, you're doing your assignment online. It's over once yeah. you pass it in, it's done. There's also an online forum, and there's a, a place for you know engagement with the mm. students and, and the teacher and the TAs and and that sort of thing is there. So, so we went through a semester. This was this summer actually. So the past summer, um, 2018, and we evaluated this. And we looked at this. Now, if I was talking to a female, you, typically when I'm telling a female this story, she just like, when I tell her, you know, the punchline, she's like, yeah. of course, but you're going to look at me like I'm crazy. So um, just, just to prepare okay, yourself. Okay, I'm ready. So um, <laughs> males would stop handing in their assignment between 75 and 85%. Okay. Okay. 100% of the women handed in their assignments until they got 100%. Interesting. So interesting to you, to other yeah. women, to the female listeners, they're going to say, of course they did. And of right. course I would pass in something until I get 100%. Yeah. Women need to feel like we really know the subject matter before okay. we speak confidently about it. So okay. 
perfect example, computer science, you know, yeah. 1,000 level course, entry, you know, intro to, to computer, computer science. Um, you'll have, you know, a, a male that maybe he developed an app. Yeah. He'll be very boisterous and be very excited. And then we have a female that maybe took a coding class that's interested. She's going to hear that and feel like, well, I don't deserve to be here because, you know, he's got all this experience, even okay. though he might have just developed an app in an afternoon and did something. It's just, it's a Just being loud about it. it. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a confidence issue. And it's imposter bias, okay. or not, sorry, imposter syndrome that women feel. They're thinking like, I'm here, but I don't deserve to be here. Okay. And I mean, this is the majority of female uh, tech conferences. You'll hear yeah. that these words, imposter by, um, sorry, um, imposter syndrome. You'll hear mm. that over and over and over again. And that is because women need to feel incredibly confident. Mm. And so in a very technical industry, engineering, tech, mm. um, that's why you're seeing those low numbers of women. So when we did that, we also measured the amount of engagement of women okay. in those scenarios. There was 85% more engagement by the women in wow. the one in the experimental group. Um, now we did nothing to compromise the integrity of Dalhousie. We did yeah. nothing to compromise grades in that sort of sense. All the tests were still done the exact same way. We yeah. didn't let them pass in tests as many times, but just that little experiment talked yeah. about the incredible impact that it would make on the women, on the, on the female gender side or the, the people that identify as female in terms of their ability, to, uh, our ability to mm. retain them and our ability to cultivate them mm. and create these incredible people that are going to enter, enter industry. And it's different from the female and male perspective generally. Mm. Okay. So we can't ever say anything definitively, <clears throat> but generally. So I, um, I, I, I read a book about some of the challenges that young boys are facing. Mm -hmm. and, and this is in the education system, specifically in the States, I think. And one of the quotes out of that book was, uh, gender equality does not equal gender sameness. Mm -hmm. So you talk about a stat like that where women are obviously putting a lot more effort in mm -hmm. and, and getting to that 100% and men don't seem to. Does it matter that we're not the same there? And yeah, I don't I, know. Like The question is, is, is where it's enough for them. Yeah. It's enough. And so... It but does like, that, does do that we, enough do we, translate do we, do we, to any success? Of us, do we all need to, need to know 100% of anything? Like, yeah. I mean, it's nice to know 100% of, so of things. So they're trying harder because they feel like they have to. We have so. to in order to feel like we belong. Yeah. So especially, yeah. think about this too. It's hard, it's hard to think about this, but imagine a classroom and only 20% are female. Right. And they're not talking. And you yeah. don't hear the female voice, and it's the male voice, and they're yeah. talking about their assignment and what they're working on, and you know their side projects, and, and they're thinking, well, I don't, you know, my side, I don't have a side project. I'm just working on this school yeah. education, and I'm trying to do a good job. And this person has all these outside interests, and maybe mm. I don't belong here. And it just weeds them out, and then we'll lose females. So there's right. a, there's, a, there's not just an attraction yeah. issue. There's a retention, retention and cultivation. If we can get to cultivation, right? So yeah. there's there's a retention issue. And industry has the same. Industry will tell you this for yeah. days. Bring anybody and sit them in this chair and ask them about, you know, when you bring in a female entry level, mm. how long does she last? Which brings me back to exactly what yeah. you said of how long will they last if we bring them at the entry level? Yeah. Will they make it through the times if there's not something that happens at leadership where there's something that's institutionalized, brought in, that there's a culture shift? Yeah. And an understanding. And we've been prepared for, we're worried at the faculty of computer science, because, you know, because of this question, we're, yeah. is there going to be a male that comes into the dean's office and says, you know, what are all these low hanging <laughs> fruit for women? And why, you know, right. why, why is there, you know, why hasn't this happened? And, you know, we're prepared to answer that question. And, and we have, you know, statements in place that we're, we're going to yeah. chat with them about. And that's, you know, we don't necessarily, we don't want folks, you know, coming into the faculty of computer science that, that don't see this as an issue or see this as, is being compassionate about yeah. changing this because this is a societal problem. Yeah. And so, you know, that's our answer to that, uh, okay. you know, depending on how yeah. the conversation goes. But, um, you know, it's incredible to think about what it's going to take to actually make a mm. shift here. And if a male comes in and they sort of had the, the incredible thing that, that is associated with this, sorry, I forgot my thought, but the incredible thing as, <laughs> as a part of this is that we haven't had one male walk through the door and say, you know, what's going on with this we're all CS and how come there's right. no scholarships for men and, yeah. you know, what what are the, you know, how come that isn't happening for me? Um, and that hasn't happened. And yeah. that's really surprising. And and something that I can say from, from the faculty of computer science, I can't speak for other faculties, yeah. but, you know, working with, because it's majority faculty male, yeah. um, working with these faculty members, the dean, the associate deans, you know, the VP of research, yeah. they're all male. 
they're all incredibly passionate about this. Yeah. Um, they're incredible, you know, at their craft. They're mm. they're they're absolutely experts in their fields, and they're so focused on that. And they're just like, yeah, absolutely, help women. Why isn't that happening? And then they move on with their research. So it, it's interesting. I'm 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 thankful yeah. that this is the working environment that we're in, and it truly is an inclusive environment. So. Excellent. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the numbers don't lie, right? So the it's, numbers you know, don't lie. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, the questions have to be asked along the way as mm -hmm. to how to do it and the reasons why, but if you're making progress on, 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 on fixing the problem, that's a good thing, right? So, it yeah. is. It awesome. is a good thing. So I think in one of our previous conversations, you also mentioned about um, you know, some of the challenges that young girls are facing in, in, in the education, like in the K-12 school system mm -hmm. and, and younger. Um, Talk about that a little bit. Quickly. Sure, yeah. sure. So, you know, and this is a, a of course, this is um, an interesting conversation because you're, you're hearing sort of a collaboration of, you know, almost two years of talking about right. this and, and, you know, meeting with industry and hearing their challenges and you know, hearing horror stories, hearing wonderful stories. You know, mm. I, you know, I've been around it all, you know, in government. So provincial feds, you know, I, I've heard all the stories. Um, K to 12 system. Um, and. I've had a lot of chats with IB coordinators, um, Department of Ed. Um, I had an interesting call, um, Cole Harper High, uh, IB coordinator, in a chat, and he he made a comment. Um, and you know there was this one was one where you know my my gut just sort of sunk because uh, I this didn't even occur to me. Um, so he said, okay, let's just let's let's you know look at this um, you know from a macro perspective. He said you know, who are educating our children from P to grade six? Mm. And he said, it's majority women. He's like, he's like, you know, if I, you know, in my conversations with the Department of Ed, he said, you know, somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, 85 to 90% are women teachers yeah. in, the, in the P to six. And he said, he's like, I don't know what percentage. He's like, but it's extremely low. The percentage of those women that have a STEM background, mm. okay? Science, technology, engineering, um, mathematics, okay? Yeah. So we have women that are going in and becoming educated, they're becoming educators, then they're in the P to six. And he said, typically those types of females use gender interventions, you know, whether it be in how they speak, you know, hey bud, you know, talking to a boy is bud, mm. um, the girl is honey, you know, the, these things are sort of, you know, and listen, it starts, it starts with parents. Like it's, it's right. before, it's before we, they get to K, but I, you know, I'm talking about the system itself, yeah. but this happens with parents, of course, you know, the little girl gets a tea set, a pink tea set, um, you know, the little boy gets, you know, um, you know, Legos or whatever, you know, he's gonna yeah. get our tech toy maybe, you know, who knows. Um, so in the P to six, system majority female taught lack of stem background that that's okay. there and he said the women are poisoning the women and it made me sick because that was the you know that's the that was one of those moments in this in this job you know with tech where i was just like it, i i can see that like it, i i yeah. you know i i thought about all the other conversations i had had in the in the p to 12 pro, uh, system and it's just like yes that that's mm. true um so you have to think about gender interventions um, you have to think about, you know, and there is a little bit of tech education, like in the elementary, you might get sparks of, you know, there's like yeah. a, a robotics course, or there might be some coding, and there is a few things, if there's, you know, a passionate mm. teacher somewhere, you know, in the junior high or the elementary school, there might be a, something that gets brought in for a day, yeah. but then when they get to the high school, I mean, computer science is taught in grade 11 and grade 12, yeah. but it's not necessarily taught at all schools, right. and teachers are scared to teach it because they feel that the, the students might know a little bit more yeah. than them, they're ahead of the curve, and they, you know, they're not supported enough yeah. because, I mean, technology, it, it is shifting and moving so quickly. It changes so fast. So, yeah. you know, those are the issues that I see in the yeah. P to 12. Um, those are the, ma the, the yeah. majors um, in the conversations that I've had. And that's like, a, like you touched said earlier, like it's a big societal change, really, that mm -hmm. has to fix a lot of those. I mean, there's steps you can take along the way. Is Dal doing anything to try and help influence to work with the, the, the school system? Uh, again, coming back to the, the Dean of Computer Science, yeah. um, incredibly, you know, incredible um, champion as a part of this. Mm. And, and he is opening the doors to, to find, you know, we're not just looking, I mean, we're looking at Dal, okay? So if you look at Dal Housey and, yeah. and you know, the Dean and what he's sort of measured on and, you know, it's, and we're growing, we're exponentially yeah. growing. I mean, he's doing, you know, it looks great. It's a great picture. And he's, he could just sit back and say, you know what, I'm going to ride this out and I yeah. look great and we're <clears> expanding. Um, no, he's opened the doors on, on the other side mm. of the pipeline, right? The yeah. industry side and, and the K to 12. And there's a lot of leaks. 
along this pipeline, okay? Yeah. And he's recognizing those. And are those Dow problems? Not necessarily. Yeah. Um, we, our numbers, I mean, we're expanding. We don't need to do any recruiting. Um, nece- well, on the Canadian side, we absolutely yeah. do. But I mean, and we're working on that. So that's another sort of issue that we have is we're trying to keep our Canadian numbers mm. um, really healthy. Um, but, you know, Andrew's really looking at the K-12 system and he's saying, okay, here are the issues. We've garnered a relationship with the Department of Labor and Advanced Education mm. and the Department of Ed, and, and we're working on those. And we have a couple of projects in the pipeline that we're working on to be able to kind of, you know, work on those problems. Called pilots, yeah. and we absolutely are involved in that side. And that's something we've been working really hard on over the last six weeks, or sorry, six months, actually. Excellent. Yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, it's a big topic. <laughs> there's, a big topic. Uh, there's lots of... Uh, different um, you know kind of avenues and issues within it but uh, thanks for giving us kind of some intel there into to, to what you guys are up to and and thanks for coming on the show I appreciate it oh, thanks been, for having me anytime it's, it's been good and yeah just give a shout out to the to the beer we're drinking yeah so this is a, a Brightwood uh, American IPA made just around the corner here in Dartmouth it's a uh, hoppy citrusy light it's the uh, I, I guess they just opened so it's fairly new but it's I highly recommend it so you give it a try. And what have what you, you're drinking something different. You're drinking something different? What? Oh, Harp, I'm drinking Heart Blogger. Uh, and it's part of the Guinness family and it's delicious. <laughs> there you go, awesome. <laughs> Thanks guys, Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, uh, what a great guest and what a great topic. A big shout out to uh, the Celtic Corner here again and we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>